Good day to you and welcome to Conversations in Coffee. We are here virtually at the Cultural Arts Center and by virtue of Lindsay Lasanti, our pro at technology, graduate of Otterbein University, and Katie Fisher, our pro at getting the word out about our beloved Cultural Arts Center. Katie joins the team in inviting artists to share their work in our loft and main galleries. She's a graduate of Columbus College of Art and Design. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator and planner for the Conversations and Coffee program. Today, let us march forth with delight and invite our guest, Bar Chuko, artist in painting in oil, acrylic, plein air, landscapes, portraits. Barb shares that drawing and sketching was one of her favorite hobbies growing up in Sandusky, Ohio. When she was in the eighth grade, her parents built a house for the family at Cedar Point. Her mother loved painting Lake Erie scenes. And Barb was surrounded by beauty and inspiration from her mother but she especially liked drawing people. So she accompanied her mother. As her mother was going out in her paintings, Barb was painting people, <laughs> but then absorbed the plein air painting, which was part of her soul from the very beginning, really, along with drawing people. She, however, in college, chose to major in languages another of her interests. When Barb had gone on vacation tour in Europe in elementary school, she got small dictionaries and looked up words. <laughs> in her junior year in high school, the family hosted a French girl in her home. And then Barb spent a summer in the French girl's home in the city of Tours in France, took classes in summer language school there. She went to Sweet Briar College in Virginia because they ran a college junior year in France where she spent a year studying at the Sorbonne and loved going to the museums. And there she minored in German and spent two weeks in Stuttgart with spending time with a war widow. And after graduation from college, she lived in New York City for two years and visited the museums and galleries there. She took an adult education class in Chinese at New York University. Various painting classes, one in New York City's new school. But at New York University, she took an adult education class in Chinese. And Barb took, as time went into the future, we will know that she went two trips to China on painting tours. The leader, as she reflected, was an outstanding one who taught her painting. Now, you, you met Barb, your husband, in New York at New York University, huh? And he was from China, born in Beijing. We had three children together, and he sadly died in 2004. Barb got her master's in social work from OSU in 2002 and worked in social work until she retired in 2014. Always pursuing her love of painting. Took classes in Columbus at the Worthington Senior Center where she studied watercolor with Don Dodra and pastel with Vivian Ripley. Painted house portraits, seeing the beauty of architecture in the Bexley homes and Columbus churches. For several years, Barb painted portraits on commissions. She loved Saturday morning outdoor paint outs where she met many beautiful people and parks and reflected with them how their paintings progressed um, in those critiques that they had afterwards. And in well, what is wonderful, as you came to know the Cultural Arts Center, Barb, you took life drawing, 
portrait painting, landscape escape painting, painting, and Mary Jane Ward's class, the copied from masterpiece paintings. And Joe Lombardo's plein air class, you loved his concept of color design and impressionistic blend of visual accuracy and selectivity. During COVID, Barb shares she took classes with Michael Gagnon and Sharon Cutter. Michael provided for her wonderful insights and guidance as she loved painting from photos with his guidance. Sharon has continued to give generously of her um, time and sharing with us, as she says, for example, a person like Sharon shares her Zoom classes during COVID. And how, how wonderful that your vocation and charism goes on. And you can tell us how you went to China in 2015 and 19. I mean, the story goes on and we can see it in these paintings. And we're so grateful to have you with us. Thank you, Barb, for being here. Two corrections. When oh. I went with my mother, I didn't paint the people. That, 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 that time I painted whatever. I remember <laughs> painting a barn. I painted a boot in the barn. And, the, <laughs> and her friend on the trip was a, he was the high school friend art teacher. He was very good. He said that was pretty good. So I was impressed. Oh, I and then when that. I did, the commission paintings were house portraits. They weren't people portraits. That, um, I mean, those are two corrections. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Well, tell us. Tell us about yourself with those corrections and that. <laughs> delight in your story. Like you had a pretty long story. Do I, what else should I tell you? Oh, it, it's a beautiful story. And we can see the story in your paintings. Just amazing. It's been fun. It's been a great use of this COVID time. I, everybody else is, you know, doesn't have anything to do, bored. I'm busy all the time. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, I'm almost don't want to it's open up again because it's, it's nice to have an excuse to just do what you want to do figure out what to paint and spend all the time you want to do on painting it. <laughs> and oh. then with, with, the, with the Zoom groups, it, it keeps you motivated a little bit. Without that, I don't know if I could do it so much. Yeah. We'll have you and Lindsay work together here to share the paintings that you want to talk about, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's, this, I just put this down this week. Our little Zoom group, some of them would go to parks to paint on, on what, Thursday afternoon or morning. And this was at the, at the uh, Topiary Garden. And I thought it was kind of fun. Mm. This, so uh, most of the, this is like a plein air portrait. The plein air ones I usually do online, do on site, but then I come home and, and, and take pictures. So I come home and work on them back in my house. So they're really only ha halfway plein air paintings. <laughs> the other half is in the studio. Oh, and the, the coloring is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was, you catch that little guy sitting in his chair and my, among the huge figures, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and then there's another person on the right. Mm. Wonder. So this this is one of in China. I asked I asked Lindsay to put on some landscapes. This is uh, actually it's not plein air because I did it from photo from photo after I got back in Michael Gunain's class. But those are my photos, and I actually combined two photos. One had the bikers, and the other had the landscape. Mm. That's the way it was, and and Guilin, and which is south. Eastern kind of China with the tall mountains, which were, they're called Karsk. They're mm -hmm. just like sandstone and the, the weather, I think, wears away a lot of the sand and then it leaves these points, these cone-shaped points all over the place. Very interesting. Gorgeous. Well, how, how is it that you uh, 
combine your paintings to come out with such exquisite color? No, it just well, I, I learned. I went. I also I forgot to say I went to France one summer with a friend who was a watercolor painter, and she was very good organizer. And she said, "We're going to only take three paint, three colors: red, some pick a red, yellow, and blue, and a little tiny palette and a little tiny watercolor thing, and go around." And I learned from those three, you can do all, almost anything. Oh. So I still usually don't use very many colors. I pick, you know a few that can make red, yellow, and blue. And then if later I need another one, I might add it. But mm. I think that helps the colors stay blended so that you, you don't get distracted by things that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Most of the colors are really very simple choice of colors. Mm -hmm. So it's more the value. Usually it's learning class, the value is more important than the darks and lights. Mm -hmm. And I designed so that your eye goes around the painting. Uh -huh. That's probably just ultramarine blue, mm. kind of yellow, and and a little burnt sienna is what I usually use, uh. and and a little a, a lizard crimson with the burnt sienna makes the dark very dark, and then you can put a little red in if you need a reddish color somewhere. Yeah, draws you to it. Love it. Mm. Hey, these are the ones I've done my my ones where I had all the time in the world and and was motivated to do something big I haven't having done plein air it's all pretty small you just do what you could carry with you and I thought well I have time I've wanted to do something big so here is the first one I did this I got the got it from all the news about the refugees it's such dramatic pictures you see uh, online and the stories are so dramatic so I want to I'll uh, show some of those. This was pretty much directly from a photo. I changed it a little bit. But these were refugees, Syrian refugees trying to get into Turkey, I think. And I think they actually got turned away. I don't know the rest of the story. But you can see that they're just physically running, dropping their things along the way. Mm. I just moved a few figures around and left out a few few figures, but most of it's from the photo. But your drawing is amazing. Yeah, I tried to get the faces, which, see, I, yeah, and this one I showed, Sharon said they'd like to see if you, what the previous, how you build up to that. So this was kind of a preliminary sketch, and then I add, added to it. Mm. Start oh. with, with the darks and lights, and then, uh -huh. then, put in the detail later. Mm. Wow. This was the second one. I, I call it fraught landing. <laughs> they were, mm -hmm. I think they were trying to, I think they were Syrians again, trying to land in Lesbos. This was a famous painting. And I saw online other people had actually painted pictures, port pictures from that same, famous famous photo photograph it was a mm -hmm. photograph that won several awards but other people had painted from it it's a russian photographer and uh i and i just really liked it they were landing on lesbos and uh, are trying to and I, it said i think at the last minute their guy just up and left the story was on the on the website mm. i just was afraid he'd get caught and he just ran away and left them there. So they were trying to get in on their own. Mm. And this is the preliminary sketch for that one. Well, that's helpful to see that. How you move from that. Yeah, th oh. those two I did in, in Michael Gunain's class. So he helped me. He's, I had started having it smaller and more to the left and he said it should be bigger so then I made it bigger as you can see ah oh, beautiful. And this is the this one I did after the classes were closed 
And I, I said, now I'm, I don't want to just copy a photo again. I want to do something a little more creative. And I wanted to do one of the African migrants because those two are both Middle Eastern. And I couldn't find any really good pictures that were, that I would want to paint from. Most of the, there were beautiful pictures of beautiful women in their colorful gowns, but most of their faces were covered up. And then there were pictures of people just walking and walking and that wasn't that interesting. So I just made a composite, which I thought I'd tell the story pretty well. Yes. Mm. And here's, I, I especially like that, see the little face on the left? Yeah. I thought he was, he was so beautiful. His look and expression and, and I want to incorporate it. And I, and I couldn't really do that, his half a shoulder there showing. I had to make it a real face. <laughs> so it shows how I worked on it and worked on it. I said, if this is the key, if this isn't right, it won't be a good picture. So I, I think it ended up pretty well. I want to share that with a student that I'm working with uh, from Cameroon and he's trying to get into one of the universities and we're working hard to have that happen and two days ago he got his green card. Oh, They had been requiring his mother's signature but uh, <laughs> if you can imagine trying to get that in Cameroon, huh? <laughs> but he now has his green card so I want to share this with him. Oh, okay. Barb, this is he was actually I, in Sharon and in the group. She said, "Now you, you need to be careful because there are lots of different cultures in Africa, and people who know Africa might be offended. They might think that doesn't go together." So he's from Cameroon, Burkina Burkina Faso, which I never heard of before. It's just oh. south of Mali, uh -huh. which was in the. It's in the. Uh, what are they called? Sub-Saharan. It's Jahal. You know, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, it, the land was pretty pretty fertile until the recent drought. So the people are a little healthier there, I think. Ah. But then the, they did have drought, and then all the refugees are coming from the worst parts of Africa into that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the people from the northeast, like are the really extremely tall. I mean, those people, you can't believe they're so tall. They look like stick figures. This part, they look a little more, <laughs> more like people we're used to seeing. Well, that's beautiful. And then I, I, I tried to do it on my iPad to, or to make the design. So I copied the photos that I was interested in, put them on my iPad and moved them around. Hmm. And see, this is, Oops, I don't know what happened there. I lost it. Did you lose it? I lost it. I'm going to get out of there. Oh, there it is. So that's the sketch. He, he doesn't look, he looks too old there. I realized it. I think I made his head not tall enough. Look younger. I try to make him look younger. The sketches are as beautiful as any painting. They, usually that's the case. Yeah, that's I, get, I get through the that space and everybody said, oh, that's beautiful. And then I, I always think, well, maybe I should just leave it there. <laughs> have it also be a painting huh? that you present. It's gorgeous. Hey, Barbara? Uh, hi, Michael. Um, if you want some time, I've got quite a collection of close-up spaces of people that I met when I was in Ethiopia. Huh. Some of them, I think you could do real justice to. Okay, if you want me to, I'd be glad to. I'm not sure. Yeah. Great. This is the one of the healthcare workers. He was a psychologist. Hmm. And he, he was he answered and he said, "I can't believe that's in can uncanny likeness." I've never met him, but he did thank me for it. Hmm. And you were doing social work for how many years before you retired? Years, 12 years. 12 years. Not that long. Mm. But this had nothing to do with that. This was just a photo that Susan provided. Uh -huh. It was a counselor, I think, a mental health counselor. Mm. And this was what 
a model at the Cultural Arts Center. And I really liked, I thought it, I don't, yeah, I guess it's, I thought it was pretty good. And he was an interesting guy. He was like six foot seven, huge. And then he was, he said, he, but he said he's a poet. I don't really think of that. And he said, while I'm sitting modeling, I think about the poems I'm going to write. It just goes through my head. That's great. He said, well, that's, and then he said, he was in the military. I said, wow. Uh huh. He said, as he was in Japan. And I said, well, that was, was that pr pretty, there wasn't any war there, was there? So you wouldn't have been too dangerous. He said, yeah, but they, there was a, one time I was afraid of for my life because the Japanese were pointing their guns at us. He and his one person he was with. And his boss, his captain, however, said, just stay calm. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. They're, they're just, they're just trying to make a show for their own people. So eventually they just stopped. <laughs> mm. But you can imagine the six foot seven guy in Japan with these little people. They were <laughs> interesting. Mm. But he was very, very calm and very nice person. And I liked doing a good portrait. It's oh, a great portrait. But I haven't, I, I just have the picture. Mm. This was uh, just a plein air, it just shows, what was it? I forget, I wrote down what they were, I forget what there was. Um, so I think that was a foot stone. That's not, anyway. Uh, actually, I think that was done in Mary Jane Ward's class. Oh. She took us, she took us only to Whetstone on her trip, on her bodies. So there, they have a pool, the pond, we were near the pond and it was in the fall. So you see the trees. The reflection in the water, amazing. Would that be challenging doing that? Not really, it's not too hard if you can get the top part the way you like it, then just repeat the thing, same thing upside down, pretty much. Make it a little dimmer. <laughs> if you remember what to do, then you need to put some little strokes to show there's still water there. Beautiful. I wasn't sure about the composition, but a you know, halfway divided picture like that isn't particularly good composition. But then when I put the bottom of the, that left corner, it seemed to make it better. Mm. Gorgeous. This was at Franklin Park Conservatory, I think. No, no, this was at the Daisy Field. We went to, I mean, the sunflower fields. There was a Lynn Sunflower Farm, I think it was. There's just fields and fields of sunflowers. Gorgeous. And it's hard to do a field of flowers. And I'm, flowers are not really my strong point. I've tried to do them, but it's, it's combined those little things in the distance with the actual flowers in the front. It's, it's pretty well. Well, I think that impressionistic feel as looking at those flowers is particularly beautiful. Yeah, I never know whether, is it impressionistic and beautiful or is it just unfinished and sloppy? <laughs> I'm not for sure. Somebody has to, else has to tell me that. <laughs> oh, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> this I did it at home with another uh, person in my cl class. He was actually a teacher. No, he he taught one class, but he was mainly a plein air painter. And he came over, and he said he just wanted somebody to paint with. I said, okay, we can paint. So we put this still life together and he wow. kind of designed it and he painted it. He's a wonderful, he's a wonderful professional artist really. So I kind of watched how he did it and just did it the same way. <laughs> it turned out well. Oh yeah. Because I haven't done many with the black background and I think it worked well. And I would think that bottle, painting that bottle with that transparent look, would that be difficult drawing it and if you know to do it, it wasn't, but just to decide to use it, I wouldn't 
probably wouldn't have done it, but he did it and he said, you should do that. And it turned out well. Ah. Just notice that top of the bottle and the top of the candlestick at the same level. I shouldn't, that's not very good. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Every time I look at my paintings, I find something to criticize on it. Oh, I think it's magnificent. Wonderful. You can see it on the, on my wall behind me, I think, that actual painting, if you want to. Ah. I can't see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. I think you can, if you want to. Hmm. Hmm. My, I noticed my daughter's online. These are, these are, I didn't, I painted her two children a few times, but these are my son's three children, because I couldn't get hers a very good picture of them both together. And the one I did, I gave to her. <laughs> so, so this is, this is, they gave me a photograph. This is just from the photograph, but it was, I thought it was cute. Showing their personalities, personality in their faces, huh? That's wonderful. They're old now. They're one. The one on the left is in college. <laughs> ah. Let's see. But it takes a long time to do a portrait to get it right. You just, hmm. I try. I look at it and say something's not quite right, and then I say I'll take a picture and see how it looks in the photo. Well, the photo always looks different. I think it makes them narrower. And then you're back and forth and back and forth. You correct one thing and then something else is wrong. Finally, you have to just, yes. Mm. But I think it's pretty good. Oh, wonderful. Barb, this is Linda. Do you normally take oh, months hi. to do something like this? Or how long does it generally take? For a portrait like this? For a family, you, you want to get yeah. the person right. Oh, that took a long time. Yeah, I just go back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Mm. I have one of my daughters. It's been taking me years to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like uh, Ellen was saying that the the underpainting always looks great. I think this was easy. It looks so much like them when I just used the burnt sienna and 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 that's it. But then as soon as I put color on it, oh, it is it's hard to make it look like them. Oh. I see. Well, you've done a beautiful job on these. That's hard to get. Those expressions and the colors are great. Yes. I'll show you the photograph. I think I still have it here. Yeah, I have it here. It was a black and white. It was a black and white photo, so I did kind of oh. make up colors from memory, kind of what they wear. Well, that's amazing. Well, they must have a lot of fun together, huh? <laughs> they they do. They're three years apart. They're not real close in age, but they're close enough. But this I did in the in Michael Ganane's class when I was starting. I didn't really. I, one day I said I don't know what to paint. I had no idea, and it, and I brought I bring my iPad so maybe I could paint something from there. But I said I don't really feel like doing that. So I just said I'll paint whatever's in the room. I'll just look around the room and paint the room. So I painted some people. The first time I did that, I painted a couple who were painting kind of near each other. And they said, we like that, we want to take it home. So I gave it to them. <laughs> so then I painted another one. And this, this is a, that's Michael standing up, the teacher. Uh -huh. and, then, and then a couple of students there. And it's, it's pretty fa fast and impressionistic, but I think it's pretty good like that. I didn't, I decided just to leave it like that. Uh -huh. And I love the Cultural Arts Center bricks, the wall, uh -huh. the, the wonderful view. Uh, and the light, it's so light and so oh, beautiful. And the light, yes, that's amazing. Uh. This was said, uh, this is plein air, and I did go come home and, and work on it too. But it was at uh, 
the family of one of the people in the plein air group in Powell, they had a mm. beautiful house near Alum Creek. And I just, it was fall and the leaves were so beautiful and the shadows and the, that was their little uh, cabin where it was like a arts, like a studio or something. Mm. It's connected to the house, I think it was. You're so true to the roots of that tree. That's beautiful. Just looking at the base of the tree, let alone the flowering of the tree, huh? Yeah, try to get the dappled lights coming through the trees. Uh huh. Now, how long would you work on a painting like that? Like I say, it's like an hour and a half on site and then I come home and work on it usually off and on during the week. If I, I put it up on this little, I showed you this frame behind me where I can put paintings and I get up in the morning and say, oh, I need to finish that, fix that. <laughs> and usually I do it several times until I decide, well, that's, that's as good as, if I do any more, it'll be worse, so I better not. <laughs> Beautiful. This I might have had more time, I'm not sure. This was at Grove City Gantz Park. Yeah. And an older one. I think I I think Sharon saw it and really liked it. I'm not sure. I thought it I wasn't sure if it's a bad painting or a good painting, and she said it was good. So I, I agree, but I won't argue with her. <laughs> it's pretty it's more impressionistic than I usually do. And, and more impressionistic than most of the plein air people. They're usually very real, realistic, but it's kind of fun that way. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Hey, Barb, my daughter lives right near there. Is that a nice park? There's a lot of good things there to paint and whatever? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was a little river, I think. Yeah. Oh, nice. Water, some water, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you depart from? that moved it to be more impressionistic for you? Depart from? Yeah, the realism that, that you moved into what was impressionistic. What, what happened there? I love it. I mean, it's like Sharon, I love it. <laughs> but you well, it was a, I, I, I just recently noticed the photo of it and it was really very much like the photo. So I <laughs> included pretty much everything and I did take a photo of it. Mm -hmm. Included most of what was there, but I didn't really know how to make it a beautiful picture. Well, I, I thought, well, I uh, there was sky, and and then there was some kind of grass or something. I forget what the pink was, uh -huh. and the different colors. So I did the sky, the colors, and then and I think I do it. The the plein air were in oil, so you can't just change it. Mm -hmm. the, the way you want to. So if you change it too much, it'll turn muddy. So you can see the, the trees got a little muddy, but then I just scraped the with the palette knife to make the white lines, which made it interesting. Yes. Love it. And then there's yeah, the darks and the, there's I think there's a there was a little uh, place where the water went under a little uh, tunnel there on the right. Yes. Uh -huh. I think if you use more paint, it makes it maybe more dramatic looking. Uh -huh. Especially when I, like when I think this is hopelessly muddy, I can't do anything. Then I start using the palette knife. Uh -huh. And you put blobs of paint on, on top of this sort of too indefinite paint underneath and it starts to make it look more interesting. There's Bill. Westerman, I see. He's our leader. Oh. But he usually doesn't do that. He does more realistic, so I don't know if he, what he thinks of this one. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Oh, good to have you with us. This was again at uh, Franklin Park, and it was in Joe Lombardo's class, I think it was. And Was that day? I think that was the day it just started to rain. And I had a, I had done a pretty nice design 
and hadn't finished it very much, but I took pictures. And then when I went home, I finished it. Mm. So it's, it's only halfway plein air, but I thought it turned out pretty good. Wonderful. I was there that day. I remember it suddenly downpoured. <laughs> we just had to pack up and leave suddenly when I was, was not. It was fast. Fast. Yeah, clean up. <laughs> mm. You don't think of Franklin Park as being like that, but that's the street behind it. Oh, yes. Right. And those homes. Mm. Surrounding it, it's gorgeous. And that was at, um, what is it? Uh, the town. What is it? Grove Rose City? Well, we get to gaze while yeah. you're looking for the name of the town. <laughs> the town. I mean, I should know that. So. Oh, right. Beautiful. I didn't even write it. Oh, Granville. Yeah, Granville. There was. They had Granville festivals, and the plein air group would go there for a festival. And sometimes you could set up and sell your painting if you wanted to. I never, I I didn't really, maybe I brought one once, but not too many people sold it. I didn't really sell it. But this one, mm. so I was just standing along the sidewalk and looking, and this day they had a bicycle rally going through the town. So I thought I'd better include some bicycles. Wow. So it was, it was kind of fun, I thought. Mm -hmm. So just standing on the sidewalk painting and people would look at it, make comments. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know this, this is the velvet ice cream mill uh -huh. Utica, that the plein air group went to. And that's watercolor actually, I didn't, I think I, I forgot why I decided not to bring oil. I thought I'd just do watercolor. I was sitting, I had this little tiny stool and I was sitting there sketching it and then painting it. And then I noticed something bothering my bottom on this little stool. There was a duck pe pecking at my rear end. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember that. There were ducks were walking around, so I had to put a duck in there. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> so it's using pen and ink. Oh, I think I'd started painting with with the um, Urban Sketchers a few times. And I found that pen and ink and watercolor really make a nice little sketch. And I thought for a building like this, that would work pretty well. Mm. So I, I drew it in the pen and ink and then put in the water, the color, the watercolor. Barbara, I'm Amy Linville, and I know you from Urban Sketchers. Hi, Amy. Uh, yeah. Hi. Nice to see you. I haven't done too much of that. But... Do you do uh, it in your own yard at all, or out the window? I have, I've looked out on Elm Creek, but it's the same trees and the same river every day. I, I think I did it once, but I haven't done much more. Yeah. <laughs> This was just, oh, this, the, in the plein air group, in the winter, we would paint inside at the McConnell Art Center. Mm. And let's see, did I bring those? Or I think I brought those once. Somebody did, the little, little, um, what, what are they? they are. Looks like crystal. Yeah. So I, I, I like, I like doing glass. I did several, and it's a challenge because such interesting reflections. And then there's such graceful shapes, and then the colors, kind of fun. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about the perspective of what glass would do when you would go to paint it. And you were courageous enough to have one of those pictures moving to the side and the other facing us. <laughs> it's wonderful, Barb. Wonderful. 
Yeah, this every glass in every situation is different. I did, I know it. There's one here. I, you know, it picks up whatever's in the room. So it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. This was one of the very first plein air ones I did. And I, I really, uh, it was pretty bad painting and they said, you know, that's maybe a good beginning. But then I went home, I was, I didn't want to just leave it. And that time I get obsessed by it. I wanted to make it good. And I painted it and painted it and painted it. Finally, I could hardly get anything more on. So I said, well, I have to use the palette knife. And then finally I said, hey, you know, that's not what I expected, but I think it's pretty good. So mm -hmm. I used it, I've been using it as my uh, theme painting on my business card. <laughs> Where do you begin? Because of the perspective of this painting, uh, you know, you can just follow that water so beautifully. Where do you start? Start with the design and, and paint it in darks and lights to get the, find out what you want to include and then how you want to place it and to allow your, your face, your eyes to rove around it and, and not just get stuck in one place. So you, in that case, you are kind of going into the distance. You see the close up is a little bigger and then smaller in the distance. And then. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. This is one I did. Oh, is that the one? Uh -huh. I think, yeah, that's the one I did. In Mary Jane Ward's class, I told her she she wanted us to paint a masterpiece. And I couldn't look through the books and it was nothing I really wanted to do that I saw, either dreary, dreary New England scenes or people or something. And and I had, I think at that point, I was thinking of going to China. Ah. I said, well, I'll, I'll see what they've got. And so I found this. I thought, now that's kind of a challenge. I'll see. I'll try that one. And it was an ancient, like 1200s, 12th century masterpiece. I mean, it's on a scroll. And it was uh, just two tone, just black and white or brown and white. So I added some color to it. Mm. It's a good study. Mm. And you were in China in 2015. And then again in 2019, do I have those dates right? Right, both in September. But this was before I went. I just wanted to see what, how it would work. And, it, and I found it, I think that's, is that the one? I'm not sure if that's the one I, maybe that's the one I did myself, I forget. But it was a good study. I learned from, from doing it. Mm. And this was, from the photo I took in China when we were on the, we had been on the Yangtze River and then we went on, on a side river. And I think this was on the side river. And you just saw the boats and the mountains. The blue of the mountains in the background, how creative that is. Yeah, that's kind of, I would say it's kind of accepted in, if we do plein air that it's gonna be a little bluer and dimmer as you go far away. And then warmer colors close up, cooler colors far away. And it was fun to incorporate that. Mm. The little boat on the left, I yeah. think I added that. This I think it was in Michael Gonane's class. I added that, and it it was more contemporary. I think what was it? I, oh, it, it was. I think I took it out of another picture, which was. Uh, kind of an old style fishing boat. And then on the right, you see the actual tourist kind of boats. And I thought, well, do they really go together? And I, I guess they, they're good enough. <laughs> Make it more interesting for the tour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. 
that's where my eye went after I saw the beauty of the mountains to the, the boat here on the left. It's wonderful. Takes in the culture of the place, huh? This actually, this is the only one I actually painted in China. Ah. Uh, and I, that's the one I, I, I thought I was being careful. I didn't know what to take on this tour. So I took a, a pad of canvas sheets and I thought, just, I don't know if this is going to be, I'll just try a canvas sheet for this one. Well, I think I used the wrong side of the canvas sheet so that the paint just sunk in. It, I kept putting paint on it, it kind of disappeared. <laughs> but it turned out pretty good. Oh. It's rough looking. I mean, it looks, you can see the buildings in the style of the architecture. It's a pretty small little painting. It's kind of different looking. This again, I did after I came back from photographs. And I forget, I, I don't know if the next one is the black and white. I, I, this is, no, I didn't put, maybe I didn't. I, I just, I didn't want to put that many paintings on. But it, like you said, sometimes the rough draft, the background painting looks almost better than the finished one. So I said, I'm going to just paint another one in the black and white and just leave it there. So I, I did. And I, I'm not sure it looked as good as the finished one, mm. <laughs> but these were three different paintings that I put together. The tour guide was a little village. Mm. You can see that that was our tour guide with a little hat on, on the left and little narrow streets. And then there's somebody dragging a buff, water buffalo around. And we, I, later I saw another picture of him in the city without the water buffalo. And then he went back to take it home, I think, or a cow or whatever. You know. And then that was, the bottom one was, as you left, you see the little stone and the kind of architecture of the town. That's wonderful. And I put them all in one painting. It was kind of different. I Because when you go on a trip, you take so many pictures. There's no way you can paint all of them. So, so I'll just put several of them on one painting and see how that works. With your husband having been from Beijing, um, the, knowing the culture and wanting to go there, how beautiful that it comes forth in your painting. Mm. Did, did you feel at home in China when you went? Well, I, I studied, tried to brush up on Chinese so I could at least try to speak. I wouldn't say could very well, but at least you can try. You uh -huh. know, if you don't know any, you can't try even. And our leaders were both love China and they're both from Beijing. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I felt at home. Yeah, I was, I think I was more interested in than a lot of the people who said, this is just too hard. I don't understand the language. Everything's old. I'm not interested, but I was always interested, you know. <laughs> And I went on more side tours because I didn't want to miss anything. Uh -huh. So I actually could have painted more, but I, want, I was more interested in touring it and seeing things. What did your husband teach at New York University? Uh, well, he studied at New York University. He taught it, political science. He's got a PhD from NYU. And then he taught political science later. Uh-huh. Hmm. Amazing. And this is another one. I, this is the one I did before that one, actually. I liked, I think, yeah, that was the same little town. Yeah, the, little, the small towns, you know, they have the, their houses are right in the storefront, kind of right along the town. So they were sitting in, in their storefront or in their house. I don't know what it was, just looking at the people watching. Oh, that's great. And again, that's our guide on the left, and that's our group on the right underneath the umbrella getting some ice cream or something. <laughs> and this I took, we went to a, a tea plantation. They, every, 
both trips, they want to take you to the tea plantation as a good tourist site where they tell you about tea and they give you a demonstration of how to make it and drink it properly and sell you some. This was, but this was up in the, a mountain. This was in the, where the um, minority cultures live and the, the country kind of shoves the minorities out into the hinterlands like we did the ending we put them on reservations where nobody can live well they shoved them up on the mountains where they thought you know there's nothing we can do with that we'll just make them go up there but they did they they terraced it they made these beautiful tea terraces mm. and so to get there you had to go up this long path along long long steps steps and bridges and this was there's a little walkway between the between the souvenir strip and then the higher level mountains so this was along the mount people would s sit along the walkway just just on the bench and watch people so mm -hmm. i took this picture and i thought that was so sweet the grandmother and the baby so that's a kind of a typical yao there's a yao and there's meow and there's song i think three three minorities in this in this area, this was, they would wear that kind of hat and the colorful jacket in that group. What a beautiful facial expression you have. Caught the spirit, her soul just comes through, the joy of her grandchild. <laughs> That's beautiful, Barb. Mm. And this was at our plein air group at, um, Oh, the Canal Winchester, the train depot. It's kind of a historic little place. I don't, there's not obviously not a train going through there now, but it was such a clean, colorful, neat scene that it was mm. made a nice picture, I think. Mm. This we went to a to um, a horse farm, the name of that horse farm. Hmm. Write it down here. I don't know. It was sort of a, an educational spot. It's sort of Christian, I think. They gave them classes and stuff. But there was a, a sort of a barn, which was also a gift shop and with a big porch. And this was in the fall, so they had the pumpkins in the on the porch, this ah. pumpkins in the barrel and the, and the um, pumpkin mm. leaves up there. Okay. And I thought that turned out pretty good. I said I'm going to keep that and use it for Halloween cards, but I haven't done that much of that. <laughs> Anyone want to comment? Feel free to join in. Well, I. Uh, this is Donna Cabell, and you can't see me, but um, I've known Barb for several years, and I knew that, that she painted. But Barbara, I have never seen the extent and breadth of your works. And from portraits to impressionism to florals and watercolors and oils, and I'm just so impressed, and I thank you for sharing this with me. It made my day. Well, thank you, Donna, for coming. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> I don't think I see everybody. I only see a few people. Maybe I'm not doing it right. <laughs> yep. Barb, you're doing a great job there making a presentation of some of the paintings that you've done with our group and your trip to China. Uh, some of them were exceptional paintings. Uh, you, it, you had the feel that you were there in some of your paintings. And... Uh, you want to invite your group to come and paint with our plein air group. It's an open group, no jury for acceptance, no dues. You just pack up your gear and come and paint with us. And Barb will give you the access to the website so that you can uh, see where we are each week. We're going this Saturday to uh, High Banks Park. I know it's going to be cold. If you're a watercolorist, put a little antifreeze in your water. Uh, but we're going to start our season 
uh, last year we painted a good bit and then quit for uh, a little bit of the uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. And then we started up again. And during the winter, we had uh, sessions with Zoom. Uh, by the way, on my picture, that's my wife's computer I'm working from. So that's why it says Eloise rather than Bill. Um, so you all are invited to come and paint with us anytime you feel inclined. And we have opportunities for exhibit of your paintings. We do a number of those and uh, feel welcome. Bob can tell you more about it. Wonderful. Thank yeah, you. I've been telling all the things I did from your group, from Quan Air. Right, right. Ah, great. Good. Thank you, Bill. Well, this has been wonderful, Barb. Wonderful. We are so grateful for your spending time with us and taking us to such beauty all over the world. Yeah. And we're so grateful you're with us at the Cultural Arts Center, our own very beloved Cultural Arts Center. <laughs> And in two weeks, we're going to have <clears throat> Deb Belliol, uh, who is a loft gallery artist right now. And her, she's a fiber artist and a painter. And her, <clears throat> the name of her show is Creating Habitats. So uh, be with us again in two weeks. Hmm? Well, thank you, Ellen. Thank <laughs> you for everybody who came. I want to thank you. Oh, yeah. Glad. That was very good. Really mm -hmm. enjoyed that. And we can tell you had a great time too, Barb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, thank we you. We appreciate your, your positive feedback, that's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and thank you, Lindsay, for doing all this. Yes.